Welcome to the General's Gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome back to Company of Heroes 2. It's nice to be back casting in person. Uh, you, you know that, that game we did, right? It was like, it was such an epic game. I feel like we kind of wasted it. Yeah, on the on the fact we were separated by so much distance and, and lack of height. It was just weird. Or so, just yeah. my, my microphone. Yeah. Like, I think we did a good yeah, cast. Yeah, mic as well. Just yeah, my yeah, mic yeah, sucks. Yeah, yeah. And that was, that was like the best game we cast in a while, yeah, I think. The, the cast was actually, yeah, pretty good overall. Yeah. So yeah, not a bad cast. And I think we had good synergy, like, yeah. you know, despite <laughs> the, the distance, Considering, right? yeah, considering the delay and stuff, it actually came in pretty good. So uh, a, a testament to our skills that we can still cast... Uh, across continents on the other side of the world, so it's good. Ideas, General Gentleman will never die. And uh, neither will DevM's uh, Pioneer Squad because he's managed to stop Cap on the edge of the point, so we'll take no damage from that Combat Engineer's uh, self five for that transition. He's, he's, good. He's, he's, going, so. he's on the edge there. He's really on the edge of that point, yeah. but it's, it's good placement. Mm -hmm. And we're going to see uh, Paul playing as the Soviets. Indeed. Man Dev M, he's a Wehrmacht. And, uh... I don't actually know if this is from the... The GCS. I don't think it is. This is just the replay of the week. Or the replay highlight, as it's referred to. So... Should be in for a good time here. We're gonna have pretty aggressive cons... Ooh, Paula! Ooh, defensive doctrine. Wow, it's been a while. Now, Dishka spam is, is all the rage. It's mm. what the kids these days are doing. With their hip meta and their, uh, you know, the fidgets, whatever, the, <laughs> the whatever kids do these days. Yeah. Part of it is different than just because. But that being said, there isn't much of a reason to really go defensive over, over lend lease. And the Paul... tank traps look like fidget spinners, or <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but Paul really isn't the kind of guy that does the you know the off meta stuff. Paul, it really is the player that. Finds a cheesy, abusive playstyle and just does it over and over again. Uh, so I, I'm surprised and impressed about this, and I'm looking forward to seeing how he pulls it off. I'm skeptical. I think he has a plan. Yeah. Yeah. He, he clearly has a plan. Going, going defensive. Maybe he wants to um just brush some of the paintwork off tanks with those AT guns or something. So even that it actually penetrates. So. Mm. Well, these. These AT mines are actually yeah, they're really yeah. crazy. Yeah. They're, they're, they're seven munitions, and they're like a basically a S mine in individual S mine patch. So you just spam them all over the place. They're um they're quite frustrating to play against, and it will limit DevM's ability to play aggressive if he goes Gren heavy or P Grens or whatever it is. This could be nasty. Yeah, the, uh, both of these constructs are going to be... Oh, nice, suppressed, but one of the models was actually already running into the heavy cover, so the rest of the squad uh, went over as well before the squad was, was suppressed and hit the deck, but uh, still a, a terrible engagement for Paul. Yeah, I thought it was going to be a wipe on the cons as they retreated through the MG, but of course the MG was firing at the both of the squads. Paul is back in his base now, and this is a really good spot to have the MG-42. The... The north side is captured by Paul, but this cutoff is currently being taken, and you will have that MG overlooking it. Yeah, so the squad's starting to take a little bit of damage, but the MG-42 is going to be repositioning for this engagement, and, uh, no cons on the- Oh, as I say, no cons on the flank! Cons on the flank! Yeah, definitely cons nowhere. on the flank. <laughs> uh, MG-42 will retreat, but thankfully the, uh, I don't think this mine's going to complete in time. No, it does, but, uh, the, uh, MG doesn't retreat through it. It's okay. Uh. So he must have seen that mine, surely, but that's mm. that's on a retreat path, so even if he knows it's there, if he retreats through it, yeah. he could lose a couple of models Yeah, here. these Grens are going to hit it. Often it's only, it was only, it was two there, but often when you retreat, you you, you spread out a lot, so you, you only get hit by one mine, but in that case, the models were quite low, so it was two Grens. A good retreat, if uh, DevM stayed there for a little bit longer, he could have got dropped down to two models and, and there, therefore be wiped as he runs past the mine. Yeah, absolutely. So the, uh, the Grens will survive and uh, they're currently one man building a uh, bunker. He's got a lot of work ahead of him, but uh, I think a couple more models will be added on soon. The looks of things and uh, that's the, the tier unlock as well for, for DevM. So expect to see another building from him soon. Yeah, that's his bunker. So he wants to get his medics out, which is nice to see. His, his squads are actually quite low. And he's versing a flamer in particular, so he needs to have the full health. Now, Paul, 
I wonder if he'll go a double engineer. I think he will at some stage mm. without waiting too long. Not only does he need the sweeper, but also he wants to just have maximum PMD mines all over the place. Oh, second engineer already. Uh, oh, wow. <laughs> so he yeah. speaks and so it shall be. It's well, a, this yeah. surprised me now because I thought he was going to go for a Dushka first. Yeah, it's a little bit odd. I mean, he does have a half a command point to go, but it's pretty much going to be done. Um, the, the, the second CP is almost here, which just seems like the best option. Has been pushing the pace of these engagements thus far, so CP-wise, it has been quite a quick game. So the AT, the AT gun will be very good against a flame half-track or a scout car, if there is one. Well, Rifle Nade actually could wipe the engineers. Your brother thought dead. Grenzo oh my firing. god. Oh, yeah! What? Max Rage. Oh no! Ah, oh, the misclicker retreat as well. Paul actually accidentally collects both his squads and gives away the flamer. Wow. Ah, oh, dude, don't do the Archon Hawk. So, I, I hate the Archon Hawk. I don't know if that was a misclick, because I, I think he retreated like a fraction of a second before the engineer think, died. Yeah. And because it looked like the Indians were going to survive that right, one, yeah, uh, and then he retreated because he was in a bad engagement there. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. But it became a problem because once he dropped the flame, he needed to recrew that one, but he already retreated at that stage. So, yeah, that's nasty. I mean, it's really, it's really strong having Grenz with a flamer because the thing is, is if you get up close, you just get roasted, and that's mm. generally how you want to fight the Grenz, especially when you do actually get that MG42 on the field. Yeah, definitely. Can you imagine D43 flamer Grenz? Not a fun time. Uh, uh, garrison clearing monsters. Uh, friends are actually going to take the, the garrison. It's actually it's pretty intelligent play by Dev M. I'm pretty sure he's predicted no Molotovs from from Paul. I guess there's a couple of factors that are going to going to contribute to that. Um, like the flame has already been built, so he doesn't really want to get that one. Um, it's, it is a bit of a fuel investment, so it's actually quite intelligent from, from Dev M. I'm pretty sure he knew that there was a, there weren't um, Molotovs. On the on the condo, he would have taken the garrison. That's nasty. He has a Dushka in that house. It's going to give him so much map control, especially given the the cutoff in the VP within range. Losing that house is is a pretty big deal, and as a result, DevM has to build a mortar, and that mortar isn't generally what you want when you're versing four conscripts, as no. they're so mobile and can flank you and, and force you off quite easily. Yeah, not at all the uh, the ideal build here for DevM. So it's going to help him out, uh, clearing out this middle house, and there's always the potential for more Dushkas on the field as well, so Mortar can certainly pay off over time. We'll assist these Grens at forcing uh, Cons out of heavy cover, if nothing else, and it looks like that's what the Mortar's going to start doing here. Yeah, that, that's a good spot for a Mortar, so it could definitely pay off regardless. And this is quite a frustrating wire, it blocks off the pathing, and you can vault that, <clears throat> but you can't vault with weapon teams, of course. But at least this, this wall... Uh, S some some while ago, this was opened up. Originally, this was a, a constant wall, yeah. so it meant you could really limit support weapons, and it was quite frustrating. So I'm glad they they changed that. Yeah, it was definitely a good change. It's very frustrating having limited routes to the middle, especially when that's uh, such a, a support weapon heavy uh, pathing route through the through the middle of the map. I mean, where do you want mortars? Middle of the map. Where do you want MGs? You know, middle of the map. The most highly contested areas is where you want those support weapons. And when you combo that with the cutoff, which just limits so much of the, the south of the map, it made it a bit too campy in particular. Like, remember when that was that huge house here? Oh, yeah. This, this oh, is, God, I remember that. This map has gone through so many iterations. Uh, well, just so many yeah. adjustments, I suppose. And so was Kolodny Firma. I mean, that map has changed a lot. I, I want to see what the original one looked like, because I remember it being pretty bad. Like... I, th I think, you know the munitions point in the south of Kolodny Firma? I'm pretty sure there wasn't actually a route through that. It was like you had to go all the way down the bottom. Right, okay, yeah. And originally the, the winter variant had two VPs in the north. I do remember that, yeah, I remember that double VP. So. I, I didn't mind that actually. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a situation you don't want it on every map, but it's certainly quite cool. The uh, the 2v2 map that we play on quite oh. makes it quite fun. Mm. Oh, no, never mind. <laughs> For some reason, I just, up his own yeah, I, I, <laughs> I just saw a demo in a squad and I got excited. But, um, well, I mean, in 2v2s, in it's, it's a lot easier to abuse that because you have a lot more support weapons in general. True. You have yeah. a lot more static call-ins, you know, things like the KV-2, like the ISU, the Sturm Tiger. So... You, 
the, the double VP in a similar area can be quite obnoxious in team games, but I think in a 1v1. I mean, apart from a few exceptions, uh, like, I don't like how on Angoville, how you have, on the right side, you have those two VPs pretty close. Because it means it's really hard to do a, a tri triple cap, but anyway, there is going to be potentially the world's most deadliest rifle nade. No, that, that, I'm pretty sure that Gren squad has it on cooldown, so he, he naded before, just before against the Conscript right. Conscri squad, so I'm pretty sure it was on cooldown. Uh, also, unfortunate positioning of MG42. I'm, I'm fairly sure that the MG42's gunner wasn't behind heavy cover. He was a tiny bit out of it, and therefore took huge damage from the from the Dushka and actually was forced out, despite the squad itself Ooh. being behind heavy cover. Time to unleash our heavy tanks. That was a nasty mortar shell. Eight kills already, yeah, jeez. it's getting work done. I mean, Paul's just giving it opportunities to get work done, sitting behind heavy cover or being too aggressive, or especially being aggressive with support weapons. Just got quite overextended in the previous engagement. So defensive doctrine is very early game oriented. You get everything at two command points. The mortar, the AT gun, Dushka, mines, tank traps. So it's really one of those commanders that it can work well in the early and mid game because you have a lot of tools that you can you can utilize but as the game draws out he's going to be versing you know potentially tigers close air support all kinds of of great late game utility but to match that what does he have yeah well i mean i feel i feel as though dev m is playing an, an intelligent game then by playing just consistently well not dropping squads but taking too many bad engagements and just bl excessively bleeding manpower just slowly building up his squad count Getting veterancy, playing for, for later stages of the game, uh, rather than just trying to win early and mid when the uh, Paul's commander is uh, is ideal. Yeah, I do like how how Soviet tier four is now for the most part, because you, you can rely on SU eighty fives and katushas and have a pretty viable late game. Uh, whereas for a long period of time, the SU eighty five was just trash. So like if you didn't have a call in an IS two or a T thirty four eighty five. Your late game was just was just useless, but but now at least you you, you can run these yeah. non late game non call in commanders and and they can still work. Can we just flick to the pioneers? Oh wow! Okay, tier there four. we go. Tier four. Jeez. That's what it was. Right. Cool. I just saw them building something. Wasn't sure what it was. So yeah, tier four is actually here uh, for Devim now. Gonna have access to a lot. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we haven't really been keeping track of the, f the fuel, have we? I mean, this is the tier 3 for, for Paul. Uh, a little bit late, has 105 fuel mm. in the bank. Um, Whereas, yeah, DevM, 119 fuel with tier 4 already up. And yeah, that's so. that's crazy. Yeah. I mean, so, so the reason why, though, is because he skipped both tier 2 and tier 3. Yeah. He doesn't have any of those buildings, and he also has a fuel cache as well. So he's going a crazy, crazy build. And normally this would get punished by uh, light vehicles like a T-70. But Paul just didn't go for it. No, he didn't. Um, yeah, it's everything fortunate for, for DevM, but also <coughs> he's had fairly good fuel control overall. DevM's we pretty much consistently had the uh, the bottom fuel point. And the, the top's been decapped a bit for Paul. It's been uh, cut off once, so he hasn't he definitely hasn't had a consistent fuel income from that area. Yeah, I also like how DevM hasn't gone LMGs because mm. his grins have been so mobile this game. And uh, it helps if you don't have the LMG in that case, because you, you can move around, see how he's flanking these, these conscripts, or at least trying to before he got suppressed. This has been a very mobile game, um, and having the just the default rifles, uh, not as good as G43s in, as far as that, but does still give you the option to do pretty well with conscripts. Yeah. And surprisingly, we, we did see Paul go for uh, a flamer on his second combat engineer squad after dropping the first one, not going for a sweeper, which is a bold move against a, uh, a Vermart with no upgrades. There's, yeah. there's so much potential for you know, Tellers and S-Mines, but I suppose <laughs> if you don't build vehicles, you don't have to worry about Teller Mines in the, <laughs> in the case of Paul. So until that eventuality actually occurs, it has a vehicle. He doesn't have to worry about Teller Mines. It could be anywhere. Uh, oh, no. Goodbye, Grenadier squad. Rip. Rest in peace. Any second now. M maybe, uh, maybe he didn't hear you. Buddy. Any. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Supply sector 
That's unfortunate because DevM all of a sudden is now uh, behind in squad counts. Three Grens against four Cons and the two Dushkas. And that is very important as the late game progresses. Having that veterancy three is so important. Uh, has, a, has a sweeper now. Doesn't want to make that mistake again. And so, yeah, both of our players have gone straight for the tier four. So that's kind of weird. Um... And I think actually that works out well for DevM then, because um, I was going to actually pull, sorry, because SU-85 with four cons with AT grenades, that panther has to be very careful. Yeah. Yeah, SU-85 would be an extremely safe choice here. It's, it's a very conservative build from DevM, uh, aside from the, the tier 4 madness. I mean, panther is quite conservative. Um, in terms of a build order, it's just, yeah, it's, just, it's, a, it's a cover all, but it's not going to give him any huge advantages. It's just going to you know, prevent him from, from getting taken down by anything. I mean, just prevent medium vehicles coming in from, from Paul. And that's exactly what he needs, because yeah. he doesn't have any AT. There's no packs. Yeah. He doesn't have uh, anything, no, no Shreks. So he definitely needs that Panther. Yeah. He doesn't really have yeah. much of a choice. And I think your rider won't really give him much... Um, you know, aggressive ability because it's going to be the SU-80. Well, actually, there's a T-34, so in that case, uh, that'll go very well here. Maybe Paula will cancel his T-34 when he sees that Panther. Um, but I was going to say, I think this Panther's really playing for the late game because once he gets a Brumbar, once he gets a, a Panzerwerfer, then he can start really trying to snipe those those Dushkas, wipe them, recrew them, perhaps. Uh, and then he's going to be in a really good spot. Uh, he didn't hear it. See... I'm, I'm pretty sure you would have cancelled that. You would have heard the Panther yeah. through Fog of War. The machine's actually insane when it comes to listing for tanks. So we'll be playing team games. You're like, oh, they've got a Panther. It's like, I didn't see a Panther. It's like, no, no, no. I heard the Panther through Fog of War. It's like, oh, all right, cool. Okay, Fair this enough. is a little yeah. bit dangerous. But, I mean, DevM, good game knowledge. He knows he can take two AT grenades. If that was a Panzer IV, he would have had to back away. But he comes the T-34-85, or rather the 76. Uh, going in for it here, these AT grenades are going to be available in about 10 more seconds. Fight by the Panther, though, just going to back away. So, unfortunate build over for Paul. Excellent timing for DevM here. Uh, ideal situation where we've got uh, you know, DevM building a Panther and then uh, Paul has already got the unfortunate victim on the field. Now, this snipe is a bold choice. Very late in the game, hard to be attentive, but I think he wants to just have something to, to flush out the snipers and uh, the, the, the dishkas rather. And, and having the vision will also be very useful for his Vet 3 Mortar. It has extra range now, uh, so he can be pretty aggressive with it once he has vision. Add this pushing in. He could wipe it with the Pintle. It's actually a rifle nade. Probably finish this one off. Yeah, if he, if he retreats back to base, he's going to get pretty low. So into this engagement, Piddle's getting a bit of damage up close. Oh my god. Yeah, it's going to be a wipe. Absolutely. Okay, he's not not committing what? to it. Oh, uh, uh, he go. gets to though anyway. Uh, can he focus that one down or maybe rifle nade it for the... Oh, he's going to get damage engine now. Oh no, Con's retreated. I'm also... I don't know, even if he went for the animation, it's going to get wiped again. Oh. oh, I had to be wrong at least once. Um, <laughs> even I wasn't sure if he was going for the the grand rifle nade, but he would have cancelled the animation by pushing with the panther right. as well. So yeah, he could have got the rifle nade off. It actually looked like the grands were going for the rifle nade, and then the panther pushed them, and I wasn't sure anymore. But um. I do like the Zisk gun though. He definitely needed uh, a more hard hitting AT, yeah. and and so with that he may just go for T thirty four spam because yeah. he has. Still has four AT grenades on these conscripts, yeah. and that's, that's a lot. Certainly not in a bad position. Also, um, a massive munitions float. Yeah, something good there. That additional uh, engineer squad couldn't come uh, soon enough. At the moment, the, the comm engineers are so busy. Uh, you know, they've got repairs, and previously they've been flushing uh, units out of garrisons. They haven't had the opportunity to, to plant many mines. I mean, have you ever seen any PMD mines go down? I haven't. No, they're hard to spot, but they I'm, are, I'm yeah, pretty sure there isn't. Yeah. And really, at this stage, getting just the regular mines is more important because you want to have something to, to damage the Panther's engine. It's kind of the problem. The reason why tank traps suck is it's like, would you rather block the Panther or would you rather have it a damaged engine? It's like, yeah, I'd rather destroy the engine on the Panther. And so, it's like, why why would you build a tank trap on the road when you can just build a mine? 
um, you know, mines aren't that expensive for Soviets. Maybe for Wehrmacht it's more important because the telemines are expensive. That's true. Yeah, this Panther has to get repaired. I like there's a second Pioneer Squad coming. But he has to be a little bit careful with so many cons on the field. Sniper would be nice here as well to, to kind of flush these units out of heavy cover. I actually went back to base to heal. It's an intelligent move by DevM. You want the uh, 71 or 81 health, the plus one on can't get destroyed by anything. Oh, the 80, it has so 82, yeah, 80, health. 80 yeah. 82 health. There you go. Yeah, the mortar so, will do yeah. 80 damage. Yeah, so it's actually important, even if your sniper's on 98% health, to take it back to base and uh, make sure it's uh, all the way up. So oh, it's not whoa, get whoa, whoa. Okay, that's why he's going in for it. Telemine. He will get hit by an, um, a my, an AT grenade, that is, but he still should be able to take this one out. This is a good range. It's, it's, it's risky. This is a ballsy move, but it may pay off here. It stops. It's stationary, which is important. There nice. goes the T-34. This gun's moving in, may get one shot off, but this Panther actually could get chain-nated. He needs to get all units to reinforce this one. Maybe an MG, but Panther's no, it's down. too far away. Yeah, oh, it's gone. Uh, I, I think he wasn't, he was counting on that this shot not connecting. You can actually repair maybe through this it would be the best oh, move. Man. Yeah, yeah, so if it was one combat engineer squad, he could have repaired through the, um, through the nade, because that was just a nade, like just barely a nade finishing it off, finishing off the panther. So it was one conscript squad, it might have been worth stopping the panther and just going for the repairs, but yeah, two is uh, too many. R really, the, the problem there was just that the panther wasn't repaired, the panther had half health. It was, if it was full health, it would have got in and out of that one, no problems. But using the panther pretty aggressively wasn't able to keep it repaired, which is why having a, a second pioneer squad preemptively can be quite important. Uh, and now, as a result, DevM doesn't have any AT, so that's the problem with this, this kind of playstyle is when you don't rely on AT guns at all, you're just so vulnerable, because if you lose that one tank, then you're out. Like, you know, if you're playing Soviets, and you go Tier 1, then your only AT is an SU-76. If you lose that SU-76, then you can get, um, overrun pretty easily. This is going to be stolen here for DevM, that's a, that's a tick in the box, and I can see why DevM decided to go for that dive. You want to keep the medium tank count down. You don't want to let your opponent just get four T-34 76s and give them the opportunity to, to swarm down your heavy tanks. You want to try and keep that count down as much as possible, but was a little bit over aggressive there and you're certainly right, it's not repaired. It's an issue. So does he go to for another panther or does he go for a tiger? Uh... I mean, depending on how well he plays, he has a, he has all the right units to to win infantry v infantry against Paul. There's no reason, especially with upgrades in the G43s now, that he can't win in that regard. So really, he's just thinking about uh, tank v tank uh, pressure. I don't think he he needs anything more to contribute to his current uh, composition. So and it's just about what will Paul pull out, what will be better against the T3476s in this case, a panther or a tiger. Well, he definitely can afford the panther and isn't going for it, so he must want that tiger. As long as he can hold these fuel points, he won't get punished too much, or at least hold one of them. Tiger could be nice long term, it has much more white pressure onto these the squads of Paul, and it is shaping up to be quite a long game. 335 VPs for Devim, 306 for Paul. Uh, long term, I feel the Tiger is a better investment uh, than the Panther. If he's not going to, if he's not going to go down now uh, to play the game out and look for wipes, get some veterancy on the Tiger as well. You got to destroy the Med Bunker here. It's always a nice snipe. But it's. I mean, maybe Paul's suspecting that he actually went for a pack. Which wouldn't be a bad idea. I mean, building the tier two is only, I think it's 15 fuel. It's really not that much. But it shouldn't be long until he has his tiger anyway. But I know I know all about that 15 fuel. The 15 fuel I didn't spend in the, the match against John. Oh, I yeah. went, went straight for a stoog, so. <laughs> Big mistake. Okay, T34 number two. Tiger here shortly. A bit more fuel on the bank needed for DevM, but he already has the, the manpower up and ready to go. Even through this reinforced few grand models, he's going to be fine. Uh, bank of munitions would be nice as well. Might even be good for him to go for a for a munitions. There's a, there's a couple of safe strap points here. He could go for a yeah, munitions there. 
Munitions would be good. Munitions cache. Yeah, especially with this commander, you've oh man, this could be a wipe. You've got not only the the Ju87, but also the relief infantry. There's just so many ways you can spend the uh, munitions here. Of course, D43s as well. But once he gets his squads upgraded, he won't have much need for any more of those. Already has two pioneer squads, one of which almost vet two. So I, I love DevM's late game here. But he needs to make sure he has some Gren squads supporting this tiger. Definitely. They're off to the left hand side, but some of these T34s should be going in. The Gren's gonna reposition now. One of the T34s is quite low. The other one's actually gonna still be diving in because I really think he can take this one 1v1 because it can't. Should be a Faust yeah. coming through now. Oh no, no Faust there. T34 does back away. Devem retains his munitions, it's gonna be nice. Not an ideal engagement, but nice stuff from Paul and very consistent penetration from these C3476s thus far in the game. It's a demo, yeah. There was also a Zis gun was, was firing at him, so I think one of those sh shots at least was him. Oh, I didn't lose the Pioneers though. Good. Lucky break for Devem. But yeah, Paul's late game uh, really isn't as good as it could have been because he just isn't using this commander at all. He has the Dushkas, sure, but Apart from that, he just hasn't used his commander. He hasn't used the mines, and nothing else is going to be relevant at this stage. So... Like, heavy board is a good bro, like... <laughs> yeah. They're nice, especially now that, you know, MG... Uh, sorry, MG42 and the, the Dushka here. Sport weapons. Devem's starting to get more of a, a solid hold on the center of this map as well, so... More intense units means a better better occasion to use the, the mortar. 21 kills on this sniper. This has actually done very well for itself. Quite surprising. Generally, late game snipers just they get like four kills and they die. But DevM uh, having very good multitasking, very good micro. No Faust. Oh, there we go. There he is. <laughs> okay, nice. he actually can use the strafe if he wanted to. Yeah, it's probably worth saving it though. He, he has such limited munitions that it's it's. I would say it'd be better to save it for a really important occasion. I mean, the tiger's getting divin duck dove on, so yeah, <laughs> for uh, a similar occasion. Another advantage of the tiger is uh, it's it's less micro investment than the panther. And the reason that is you can kind of just set and forget the tiger to some degree. Just put it on a point, let it shoot infantry, no worries. In order to get kind of value added uh... out of the panther. Oh God! Worst garrison take of, of 2017, Paul. Worst garrison take of 2017. Not good. Yeah, just Paul's Paul's that guy. It's like he needs to like move out of his parents' place, right? So he's like he's looking for a new place. Uh, the very first one he goes to, the realtor's like, yeah, this, this is a good place. He's like, oh yeah, no worries, man. I just move in here, and he moves in. And it's like there's dry rot in the walls, and there's termites in the floors. Hashtag and... millennial struggles. Yeah. But right now we have tiger struggles. Two T34s. Strafe gets called. He's actually blocking it off here. This gun doing some good shots as well. This could be one of the T-34s going down, but this is an excellent pincer by Paula. The Tiger, will it survive this one? We have the strafe coming through. One, one. T-34 goes down. Other one Run as well. Armor. Yeah, we may not penetrate here, but there's two of them, so it should be enough to get the job oh, done. Nice. Down she goes. Tiger is destroyed. And uh, the T-34s, they have to get the hell out of this strafe. Uh, yeah, that was an... Excellent use of the strafe by Paul, but DevM just uh, sorry by DevM, but Paul just microed it really well. Kind of cut the tiger off, forced it away um, from the strafe and safety of uh, DevM's base. Played that well. We actually got a rear armor bounce there as well, dude. There was a rear armor point blank bounce from one of those T34s. That was ridiculous. Oh uh, yeah, that's, that's the worst. Yeah, but so. uh, that's kind of the problem when you don't have a pack or just any anti tank. It's it's so flimsy, and if you do get caught. Uh, then all of a sudden you have no way of, of keeping it alive. And there wasn't any Faust either, right? Yeah, there was no Faust. There was no exactly, Faust. Yeah. And, he, and I think he had the munitions, so yeah, yeah. I, I think DevM certainly could have played that one better. Paulo did a great job. I love how he split up his T-34s. He had one in front, one in behind, because it not only does it block the movement, but it's also it's there is no way you can not have rear armor exposed. Yeah. It's just a matter of which one. And the Zisk gun got a couple of shots off as well. Tiger, I don't think it was fully repaired either. So no, that was just a, it was a really good engagement by Paul. Only losing one T-34 in the process. So he's looking pretty good now. Um, but 
Dev M still has a pretty crazy composition, just not any anti tank, but yeah. a lot of anti infantry. Yeah, it's a bad move by Dev M not having the Grens available for the Faust. And uh, another reason the strafe is so amazing is that it's going to chunk, especially medium tanks, down below Faust range very quickly in a single pass. Uh, so obviously the Tiger with, with pretty poor turret rotation, it's going to be focusing one T-34, so that's going to get that within fast range, and then but the other one, it's quite hard, the Tiger can't turn its turret, uh, take a shot at that T-34 and, and turn its fire back again, it's only going to be firing at one tank, whereas the Strafe kind of takes that away. The Strafe comes through, one pass, and then it's fast range, uh, so you can get the damage engine. See, I think this is when you cut your losses. This is when you collect your chips and you go home for the night. This is when you build a tier 2. This is when you build a pack. Yeah. You've had your fun, Dev M. It's been a good night. There's been some thrills, but but really, Dev M, you need a pack. Because uh, even if he gets a Tiger again, which I'm sure he will, or maybe a Panther, he's, he's going to have to deal with three T-34s. And, and three is the magic number. Three T-34s, that's when you can gangbang a Tiger or a Panther. Especially, of course, with the Zisk gun, which did just get wiped. If that's stolen, that's a pretty huge swing for Dev M, but... I don't see that happening with this Their could go down. Oh man, Their oh wow. going down! And they blew up a mine, I think. Was it? It must yeah. have been, yeah. Okay, so the, the way that the, the that mines work is that they have an armor and Flamer has a penetration amount. And you have like an incredibly small chance to detonate a mine with a Flamer, but it, it's so low that it generally isn't worth doing it. Whereas in Co-1, you would detonate the, the mines like instantly with a Flamer. Right. So you can't actually do that. But, yeah, that, I, th I think that's what happened, is that was just a lucky lucky penetration on the mine with the flamer and blew it up. But, Dev M now building a panther, and the problem with the panther is it, it can't really do much against the Zisk gun. Whereas this a tire, you, you can just get some lucky shots and wipe it from the front. And he, he absolutely has to go panther here as well, just <laughs> more, more AT threat. It's, uh, if he can have it up for a little bit longer, I mean... He's, uh, sorry, DevM's still on 322 VPs here compared to the 142 of Paul, so DevM has had excellent VP control up until this point. So, if you can actually hold on to the Panther for a little while, it's it's possible, just possible, not promising anything, that uh, DevM will, will manage to get a Tier 2 up and, and find some packs so he has some supporting AT, which uh, makes the, the Tiger then again um, uh, uh, a potential, a likely candidate for being built for uh, adding to DevM's Arsenal, but he's not looking good in terms of population cap, even with the Panther finish now, he's on oh, 64. Man. 69 though for, for Paul and hopefully... Oh, I think he's okay. He's probably in a... Yet another three pioneers are going to go down here. The, the one veteran survives, the uh, the guy who who's unkillable by demos. When it comes to pure defensive supporting your Tiger or your Panther, whatever it is, the Shreks are actually better than the pack. Oh, that was a that was a telemine that went off. And maybe it was just a regular Soviet mine, but either way, that is a T-34 being wiped. A good pick up there for DevM and a good pick up there for Paula. Nice. Counter for counter, one pioneer squad goes down, less repairs in the bank for DevM though he still has his, his vet two uh, pioneer squad, it's the main thing. It's so sad because the sweeper was so close and it was <laughs> it was the wrong squad as well. Yeah. If if that pio squad capped that point, he would have been okay there. Dude, I, I'd be haunting my uh my Vermax banners that decided not to issue me with a minesweeper after I went down in a blaze of demo glory. I would not be a happy chappy. Yep. Two T thirty fours that's manageable. Devim, I think, can deal with that, especially if he if he gets his JU87 available. As for Paula, uh, I mean, he has a couple options here. He could just keep spamming T34s. He could go for an SU85 if he wanted to. Uh, and there's only two Grens left, so I think he's actually okay in the infantry department. But this sniper is becoming a bit of a problem. 32 kills. Leading models and bit by bit. We've only seen one Conscord go down. Paul hasn't revealed really anything in terms of the Dushka. Still has access to the Heavy Mortar, yes! Ooh. Only I'd said that five seconds earlier. Uh, had the manpower and has actually completed it now. So that's a that's a, that's threat. That's that's pressure. It means the Sniper, every time it gets low, it's going go to back, go back to base. Every single time. Grens are going to get chunked down. T-34s have more pressure because the Mortar's going to be firing as well. Uh, all of a sudden, there's... there's Huge increase in the white pressure for 
Perfect. Yeah, two MGs as well, so I think that's really his concern, is, is, is he doesn't want to get locked down by support weapons, especially given the VP situation is not going well for him. We are losing a sector. Vet 3 MG in that house, so it looks like this, the southern VP should be pretty secure for Dev M, and same with the north, I don't see Dev M getting this one back, especially with that demo. Excellent use of the, the munitions here for Paul. Stick over the combat engineers real quick. Other squad? Uh, that one. Is, did they build a... There it is. Look. Mine. That's Is that a PMB? Mine? That's a... No. Is that it? That, no. That, that's a wreck from that's something. That's a wreck. Yeah. Right. Check the other squad. Damn. Maybe not. I, I could have sworn I saw the icon flicker here for Paul, but I don't see a mine going down. So that's weird. Maybe, maybe he didn't use it. I just want to see one of these PMB mines actually go off. There's yeah, I, I don't, there, I don't so, see any. Yeah, no, I don't, don't either. It's been ages since I've seen them. They are like square, though, aren't they? They're not, they're not round. It's like it's grey. You, you can right, see yeah. it. Like you know how mines that ha how it's like it has that little kind of transparent color yeah. on it. Sniper could be wiped any second. Oh yeah. I'm on. Uh, I don't. I'll be on a sniper wipe watch. <laughs> Even worth the the zis barrage is pretty quick. So. Almost within range of it in two. Sniper's also very useful for spotting the T-34s. See, the Panther knows nice. where to go in and where to engage. Especially when when you're vulnerable to getting swarmed, having that sight range is, is so important. Probably the biggest advantage for Paul here. Still banking up a bit of fuel. I'm guessing he's going to go for another T-34. Unless he goes SU-85 here to try and combat the Panther and just hold, hold two VPs, but... Certainly a possibility in terms of DevM's fuel count at the moment. That Tiger's a fair way off. If it even is a, a possibility at this stage. You're going for the... Going for the SU-85 and just holding the, the central VP could be an option. This is where S mines are very useful, but mm. wants to keep enough munitions for the strafe, able to actually go around the MG, get the VP, and now flushing out that MG with his mortar from all the way over here. Jeez. Will just be another T34. I don't hate that. It certainly spreads the pressure uh, for Paul, and he has again died potential onto the, the Panther. Devon not having munitions is a big problem. Paul can just do whatever he likes at this stage in the game. He doesn't have any strafes or anything like that, but in terms of in terms of mine coverage, he's in a fantastic position. Does he have Molotovs yet? Hopefully he has Molotovs as well. I mean, I know no. he's got an, no, he should have Molotovs. I know he's in an amazing position fuel and band power wise, but when you're floating this many munitions, it becomes more and more worth in the later stages of the game to to unlock the Molotovs. It's a much more it's a very efficient use of. Um, Use of resources because it allows you to spend your other resources that are oh. essentially useless. The fouls. So we're in range now. Oh, Everyone straight into it. He uses the strafe instead, what? but that should be oh, okay yeah. here. Oh, actually, he built a pack. My man and this T34, they're both going very deep. He's out of the range of the pack, and now the rear armor exposed. He needs to rotate this one. It's took way too many shots there from that rear armor, but. It should be the Vet 3 one going down. The Vet 2's in the base, but the rate oh, of fire yes! is so much. He got the Vet 3 in time and firing incredibly quickly. This one at least will be going down, but he's actually out of munitions there for a Faust. The pack's being decrewed. Oh my god, that was not well played at all by oh, Dev M. No. What was with that lack of rotation? I have no idea. I, 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 I... I'm speechless. I'm, I'm not even sure. It, it would seem as though the Panther was trying to back its rear armor into the trees and allow the pack to fire. So I could see what it was going for. Also, Dev M, he was three munitions short of a Faust after using the strafe. That was brutal. Incredibly sad for Dev M. But a bit of a misplay. And the fire rate as well from Paul's T34. It was, it was a millisecond before <laughs> yeah, the Panther yeah, fired. Yeah, yeah. You can just you can, you can feel the tension here because we know what the fire rate of the Panther is. And the T-34 got in there in the nick of time, found the rear armor, and actually killed the Panther, because guaranteed the Panther was going to penetrate at that range. Uh, that T-34 was dead to rights, and it was a millisecond of difference between the Panther firing and the T-34 firing, and both of these tanks are going to walk away for Paul. Devon has lost squads as well. He lost, I think he lost a Grand during that engagement. He lost something. He's very low. Definitely lost the Dushka. 
Yeah, he lost a lot of stuff. He's not in a good spot now. It's, it's pretty much could be game. Uh, Paul in incredibly cost-efficient engagement. Can't believe those tanks walked out of there. The pack getting wiped. Brutal. Yeah, that's rough. I mean, and that's that's really where the Pigrens are better than a pack because the Pigrens they can chase a lot better. They have higher DPS in general. The two Shreks. They uh, they don't have the arc limitation because the pack didn't fire there because it got it got flanked just at time. So, I mean, the munitions of course is, is the issue. He, he obviously wanted the strafe and didn't want to spend the, the munitions on the Shrek. But I, I also th I think that that's that's Devin being a bit greedy because. I mean, I would have fired the Faust, right? Yeah. And he went for the straight. Mm. You would have fired the mm. Faust? Uh, no, I would have fired the Faust, yeah. But but mainly because I just would have defaulted to Fausting it straight away. Yeah, it's, just instinct, the, it? yeah, yeah. it's just an instant instinct. I probably, yeah, look. I mean, there's every pos possibility a player of his caliber thought he had enough munitions just on the fly looking at his munitions, thought he had enough for the strafe and the Faust, so he was going to strafe Faust, and then realized, oh, shh. You know, it was it was literally three or four munitions short for the Faust. It wasn't a it wasn't a lot. Yeah. Um. But no, I probably would have Fausted first. It's always the safer option. I mean, I've got a low T34 there. It's, it's a free a kick. Kill, right? It's a free yeah, kill. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. It's it's pretty much a free kill. It's like I rather walk away with a free kill than a you know 50 50 chance of winning in an engagement in that situation. I would have just Fausted and then just killed the T34 with my Panther because it just stops the potential of a dive. The potential of a dive for two T34s is so le so much less than three T34s. Yeah. Two, yeah, three, two T-34s, yeah. I, I mean, around here, just for yeah, the viewers of Federer, because yeah, he, he area, didn't fire the so. Faust, mm. but... And, and even then, I mean, still, like, it, it would have actually worked okay if he just rotated his pa his mm. Panther. Yeah. But he just he just kept it there, just getting the rear armor. It was just it was just free penetration. And, yeah, I mean, this has not been a good game for Dev M. I mean, he's, he's played well in terms of his, his infantry, his preservation of units and his micro and stuff, but he's... His vehicle preservation, his tank battles, just haven't been good. He's thrown away that that first Panther was a bit greedy. The Tiger, I can't even remember what happened to the Tiger, um, but I don't, I don't think that was wasn't too bad. But yeah, that that was that was not a good play. That that's yeah. That's Tiger upsetting. just had poor support, but um, oh yeah, that's, it wasn't that's really misposition. Yeah, it wasn't yeah, prepared, yeah. but yeah. Yeah, not, not, not an excellent vehicle vehicle game for for Devin, and that will that will lose you matches in Company of Heroes too. Uh, vehicle play incredibly important. I mean, obviously everything is you know, you, your infantry preservation is, but if you can't micro your uh, your vehicles well, he's not having a good day. Yeah, I mean, I can definitely see I can see more what Devin was going for in that last engagement. It just wasn't wasn't perfectly executed by any means. Oh, there goes the grand. Yeah, with that's the flamer. That's pretty much game. I mean, the Panthers rebuilt, but. 123 VPs for Paul, 83 for Dev M. I, I don't see a way he can pull back into this one. Pack's gonna be flanked here. Okay, if he finds a good engagement, maybe. Pack's gonna be backing away. Panther has rear armor. TK probably actually blocks the pack. Or the other way around, I'm not sure. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> who who blocks who? I don't know. <laughs> it is the chicken and the egg, but neither of them moving. Pack's actually set up now in a pretty good position. At the same time, he's not micro. Oh, wow. The nice one's gonna go down. Ram. Nice ram. That's a good ram. And there's a there's a Zisk on there gonna benefit from this, get a one shot off at least. Yeah, good ram. Uh, yeah, when, when there's no way you're ever going to get out of dodge, there's just no chance. Uh, going for the, the swaggy ram is, is always an option. 53 VPs. Uh, Devin's going to pull something out and he's kept 2 VPs. This is something down south now, but he really doesn't have anything to send. Grim Squad's going to be retreating. MG's already in the middle unless he caps with a two-man pack. Like, doesn't really have anything. Should be the MG going down as well here. Uh, especially in the late game, if you're a Soviet and you have multiple vetted tanks for that that uh, the capture territory, and the same with US, your vehicle crews, you get such good VP control, and that's a GG. Paul knocks out Dev M, but honestly, I think it was more Dev M knocking himself out. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, uh, yeah. It, certainly taking nothing away from Paul. Very well executed dives with yeah. the T thirty fours. Uh, I'm not sure how much he pre-swept the area with the combat engines. There's always something you need to do before you go for those T-34 dives. Keep it in mind. General Gentleman, uh, do not recommend you just dive blindly with T-34s and it works every time. That's not our suggestion. Uh, you know, pre-sweep pre the area, but uh, yeah, Devon just did not micro those engagements well, Was did not have his tanks well supported either. I, I just love all this vocabulary that gets invented. Pre-swept. Pre I don't think I've ever yeah. heard you say that, but... <laughs> It's it's an important concept. It is, pre yeah. pre swept. Uh, of course, yeah. When you're going for a dive of any kind, you want to make sure 
there aren't mines, and and there was actually a few mines around. You know, there's one up yeah, here. There were, I yeah, think one tagged the T thirty four over here or something yeah. like that. Um, yeah, one T thirty four went down because of one of the tellers. So <laughs> there was there was pressure. There, there certainly was mine pressure, and there was, there is that possibility. Um, and you also want to avoid um, common deep mine spots where you just go for the really safe ones. I pointed out a couple of ones. Like, yeah, there, um, in, the, in the case of DevM, yeah, there, that's another common one. Um, co- places where you, where you commonly oh, path. Oh, this is the worst. Commonly, yeah, that's yeah. another one. <laughs> places where you would commonly path to go for dives and things like that. You want to avoid, obviously, you avoid those areas. I mean, because uh, it's just places where it's just going to be unavoidable dodging a mine. So instead of being like 50-50 in open ground, whether you hit it or not, where you're guaranteed to hit it, so narrow pathways or commonly uh, path roads like crossroads and that kind of area. Um, they're areas you want to avoid when you are diving if you haven't uh, managed to get a sweeper in that deep to make sure that you don't uh, lose a tank to to a tail line because it will. Uh, you have to you have to change your. Uh, change your micro on the fly very quickly with those dives. It's like, okay, one T34 has been fast enough to change up what I was doing. So the initial plan is just dive with two, three T34s, but that's not, not going to work out every time. There's, you know, Faust to worry about. There's, there's, there's uh, strafes to worry about. There's telemines to worry about. There's pathing to worry about. There's a lot of things. So it takes a uh, a very quick-minded player with excellent micro to actually pull off those, those, those medium tank dives and make it look that yeah. good. The stressful. It's like mm. in in the moment. You you know you, you feel the adrenaline pumping. You you feel the butterflies. You're like this is this is intense. I mean, if it's a tournament game in particular, I don't know if this was, but some of those tank engagements in Co Two are just like, oh, yeah, <laughs> this is intense. Yeah. And and your, your tunnel vision when that happens. But I, I think that's it's one of the reasons why Colodny Firma is a very popular map is because it has a mix of both choke points and open terrain. I feel like the least interesting maps are the maps which are either completely open or completely choke points it's mostly open but of course and you do have these little choke points and that you can use to your advantage and i think this is like supposed to be trees but they're all gone now. yeah the uh the the panther decided to pass through there yeah well that'll wrap us up thank you for watching hopefully you enjoyed the cast we will see you next time stay tuned for more company of heroes and more rts content thank you guys Feels bad, man. My voice is a bit dead, actually. Feels rear armor, man. Feels rear armor.